at this moment in Ghana, tell me if I'm wrong, we are surviving. Big time. We are surviving. There are people who have it. They are also surviving simply because they can't use it the way they want to use it because how they got it was not through good. So they have to find a way to pretend they don't have, but they have, but using, then, then you don't see that they are using. And those who can boldly use simply because the way they had it, they don't care mm -hmm. who cares yeah. how they got it. Mm -hmm. They won't pretend they are surviving. They are living large. Hello and welcome to Curating Dreams, a creatives podcast. Um, this is what we call chapter 2022, a splash of orange, um, where we wish you all the vitality, the health, the exuberance, the joy um, that this life has to offer, and then some. Um, episode 7, still joined by two of my favorite, favorite tests, uh, Yibo Kojo Yibo and... Betty Bleaka, doctor. Um, in this particular episode, we are discussing capital. <laughs> what, <laughs> what, to be capital? what kind of capital? What thing they come to mind? Accra. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, what do you mean? Capital letters. I, I forgot <laughs> I was dealing with creatives, Charlie. The place you guys take me goes op op opposite <laughs> to my. But that's wonderful. So what about Accra do you guys find fascinating or not so fascinating? Which means that, I mean, for those who don't know, we are all stuck in this small space called Accra, most times. Is this where you wanted it to go, though? Is that oh, what you mean? Fine. I'm moving to the beat of life. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Accra is packed. I think that's what I don't find fascinating. It's, it's overbooked. And it's, it's, it seems like it's, it's still on the same trajectory. More and more people coming in. So Accra is too packed. I mean, so w I, always looking at like solutions, do we need to uh, decentralize, move to other cities, countries, have fewer children? <laughs> countries. No, I mean, I think we, we just, um, we need to decentralize the institutions that are focused here, which make people want to come here. Um, moving out of Accra wouldn't change having to come back in, to come to work, to come and use certain services, to come, you know what I mean? So I think it's, 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 um, it's important to decentralize institutions and the attractions. Because there are, like, you know, magnificent places outside of Accra, but it doesn't change the fact that eventually you would still have to come in to get things done. I get you. I mean, yeah, that's true. Apart from that touristic appeal of many of uh, Ghana's um, alternative spaces. Everybody eventually has to come here if they need, uh, excuse the expression, shit done. Um, maybe don't excuse it. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I've just remembered a performance you had, Yibo. Um, uh, and no, it's not just one performance. You've, you've done this over and over again where mm. you ask the audience for one word here, one word there, yeah. and then you do um, like an on the spot composition of, of a poem. Mm. Um, and it makes me think about how different our thoughts were on capital, or, 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 like at the, at the jump, on, on the jump was the expression. Mm. So Betty was thinking capital, a crowd of Ghana, and you were thinking capital letters. Yes. So take me where you were going with the capital letters. Because I hear capitals, it just came up in my mind, capital and letters. So the big letters from the smaller ones, but then I also saw money capital to begin something or to start some investment or something else and then the capital itself as in capital mm? uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> no but yeah those uh, capitals you in, in most of my no 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 <laughs> most of my like some of my performances I always will pick this idea of the words that people send is the, the capital the main words that i can use they are the capital that are used to do the performance which is also the same as the capital you get in order to start a business or i mean is the initials that you use so i look at it like that and that's what just pop up in my head but back to the business uh, of capital um money and other things you know in a bit but uh as a joke so one time <laughs> since i've been around Yibo, 
I'm always tempted to call you black because you were once called say, black. I mean, there's still people still. who call you that, yeah. yeah but um, there was one, one time inspired by your utter creativity. I was on stage and I decided to also ask for words from, <laughs> from audience members so I could do on the spot. It was, yeah, was beautiful. I needed to get off the stage. <laughs> But so, um, well, the, the, the poetry didn't flow. It was, it was a nightmare. I was blank. I think I went, I was lucky enough to have one line, one full line, and then I was, it, it, was, it was overwhelming, yeah. But I'm glad but I tried it. That's the beginning. Yeah. You should have tried it again and again and again. It is out of the blank that we can see the light. So no, I know my lane. Freestyling is not But it comes. Because I have, I have people or... <laughs> some of the artists who never have done it before but because of consistency they are doing it and this is one of my strongholds that you don't need to be a master or mm. born with something so long as you are willing and you feel the need that i want to do this it's always possible and this is how i encourage people that let's do it i also saw it somewhere and then i just this, I can. I want to do this, and then it comes. So long as you have the capital, you should be able to start a business. Capital money now? No, still. Hmm? Still, it's still the capital because so long as you have the capital of beginning something to which begin is what, something, money? which is still words, no. Words. Or skill. Yeah, capital that's letters or. to begin something. Yes, oh, you see. Poetry. No, I, no, I'm talking real. You're speaking. No, the the words that you will use in trying this kind of skill. Is the capital. Because we are dealing with capital, I'm still trying to not go away from the capital subject. But yeah, I mean, it makes sense, it's right? Using words as capital to create something. Yeah. You actually get it before me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but how do we feel about capital going towards monetary and other? Um, and is our viewpoint. Um, does it have anything to do with what we know? and what we experience with regard to capitalism? That's a very loaded question <laughs> that I'm trying to um, pick apart in a good way in my mind. Um, I could make a good lecture. Like you on that stage, someday. you would make an amazing lecture. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of went bl blank, like, um, what exactly does she mean? <clears throat> and so I'll just, I'll, I'll just go out on a limb and, 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 and mention what I see. Um, and so I'm thinking that I'm thinking about the importance of social capital, right, in every area of our life, but particularly in, in starting an endeavor. So right now I'm entry level. I'm trying to find a job, a permanent job. I have a part time gig that I'm with a working PhD. On. So you're not finding a job like any yeah, other. Yeah, but it's still entry level. <laughs> um, and and I'm thinking about the importance of having the social capital to even make put my foot through the door. Um, and thankfully, I did make a friend who turned out to be your friend, Crystal. I called you and asked you about him. Who that? Me. Oh, yeah. The guy went to Morning Star From with. primary school. Yeah. Small world. Yeah, so he, he's been amazing, right? And he's been an amazing social capital that I didn't even realize could be that valuable. He's introduced me to a number of people. And these people have also in turn become some kind of capital for me. They have introduced me to other people, all in the um, academia space and... Um, it, it, you realize more and more when you're actually in a certain situation how important it is to have these kinds of networks and how far they can take you. Talking about the social, the, I mean, you started with the capital and then you added the social to it. Then a word, something I've also heard, which is reputational capital. Then I realized that it's probably the same thing. You know, I've spoken to you about it before. I realized that it's almost the, the same thing. So, for me also, that had become something I did not know that I've had all this while that people contact you and they're like, oh, I need this and so and so, I want to, somebody who can, and I realize it's easy, I get the connection or the contact or, the, oh, take this number, call this person, and I'm like, wow. So this, until this guy or this friend of mine told me that you have the reputational capital, and so it's important you can start making money from it in a sense like consultation or that kind of thing. But I haven't been able to find a way of making the money. But I, I really, you've opened it up again for me to see it on another level. I remember how yeah. impressed I was by that concept when you spoke about it because 
it's um I mean, I know that, especially when you've worked within the arts mm. over a number of years, you build a certain, um, let's call it trust, street cred, for your ability to do certain things a certain way, right? But then to actually think of it and um, then decide that I can work with A or B or not, or put myself in a certain situation or not, regardless of the, b the benefits involved, because I value what I have established even if it's not um, what the world will call material, material, that's it's 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 an it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy concept, you know. Yeah. But and I think we don't respect that enough as artists individually to say I'm not putting my name here because um, it doesn't it doesn't put respect on the sweat that's gone on this on this path, you know. But I think that's something you do very well, Crystal. Yeah. In in your um, musical journey. You could have easily <laughs> gone down a certain path. No, seriously, because, I mean, you, um, you, you don't do popular music. And it doesn't matter to you that someone might not even really get your poetry. Sometimes it does. It does. Yeah, it but it's the, the, yeah. the problem is their brain not getting it. It's yeah, not yeah, yeah. what it's not you are problem. putting out. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and, and I find that to be quite impressive, right? To know your craft to be so aware of where you wanted to go and to to follow that path. Thanks, Lai. Yeah. I think that's something you have you've but, done um, quite well. Off subject, and since we're doing compliments here, uh, a couple of decades ago, Charlie, I'm giving away our ages so <laughs> <You're> old. <laughs> somebody gave me a lecture, somebody in a creamish, yellowish shirt, I'm colorblind, so about <laughs> <He> is colorblind <laughs> about um the importance of having a voice that would be immortal if you will because at the time i was slightly tempted to go the popular um route not that popular is wrong it's just yeah I, I get you depending but on who you are. um and, and there's also it's, it's also the importance of having the right community around the voice of reason mm. or voices of reason because at the time it seemed like a sure entry point into what I wanted in the future. But then you know that the girl in the orange was like, or the yellow was like, um, think long term about legacy and um, yeah, and be sure not to make the wrong choices. So, gracias. We thank her. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes, we thank her. But yeah, so Capital. Um, hmm. Are you? Yeah. What do you think if you think of Capital? I think of Capital as what's important to one. And that could be a static concept, or it could be, um, it could change with time, it could change with environment. Um, yeah, so one day, for me, emotional capital could be it. Like, I want to have the emotional intelligence to, to decipher, um, say, a liar from somebody who's speaking truth. And another day, um, it could mean the resources to be able to make a podcast happen. Mm. I, I think my my what's what is relevant, and, and that's how I see capital as what's relevant. What 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 makes again shit happen um, can can change from from day to day, um, from time to time. But what capital letters, you're still on there, or does does this make you go somewhere else sometimes? Capital. For me, when I see it, it's just something that is. A little bit above the one, like capital, like a little above one, or something that's a little elevated, or up, or more, or open, or bigger. And this is just the image I have when I, I think of capital. But you also stretch it more to the isms, and that is on a very bigger level where we realize that it's coming to the place where power is in charge where you become a subject to the one who is running that that level or that uh, space but capital to me still is more um, surreal like you can't touch it. I mean, if you even think of, let's say, the capital city or whatever it is, you can't touch it, even if it's worse or all these things. So we need to be 
you mentioned emotional capital. We need to be IQ capital also to catch these mm -hmm. spaces. And so it's a very heavy thing to deal with if we have to take time to break it into pieces. Then we need to be sure which capital are we trying to deal with right now. If not, we will end up capitaling ourselves. Hey. <laughs> Speaking of the isms, yeah, I've always struggled with um, Western, so-called Western ideas and, and finding a place for myself and society within their isms. So for example, in school we know that there's capitalism and if it's not capitalism at work, then it has to be something else. Socialism, uh, what else is there, communism. Um, and then people ask me this question, so what's Ghana? Is it a, a, a capitalist state? Is it, a, is it um, far right? Is it center right? Is it socialist? Uh, socialist? Is this, and, and then either my, my teachers were really bad or <laughs> I struggle with, does it have to be situated within those boxes? Is there like an alternative to, to all those isms? You know, Do we create isms as we go? Can I create my own ism at some point? Well, it, it depends on the following of the ism to make it stand, to give it the power to be a standard um, that we aspire to. I'm, I'm, I, I, when you were talking, I was actually also really thinking, what, what is Ghana? <laughs> it's Ghana. But I think we are, we are pretty capitalist, right? Um, with, with a central government, we, we, are, we, are, we, are capital, we are capitalist, but we are a unique form of capitalism because of the import of traditions and the import of religion and how that shapes the kind of capitalism that we have. So although we also have the cutthroats, um, everybody wants to succeed on their own terms and the market determines the needs and we, we have that, but we are still also very communists and I'm using this very um, Vicedly. carefully, yeah. <laughs> but in, in, in the way in the way we in in our communal aspirations as well, right? Because um, you realize that we 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 have we have a way of um, we are nepotic in a sense in, in in trying to pull other people in our families or our communities up along with us and and fix them in certain places, um, which is not a necessarily capitalist spirit. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we are a unique form of it. We, we combine so many different aspects of ourselves into it. Um, but I, we are pretty much capitalist, I would say. So we're like, we're cap capitalistic in intention most times, but we have a tendency, a large tendency, significant tendency so towards community. Yeah. When we are not too brothel, brothel washed <laughs> from, from travel or from living elsewhere. Is, is that how it happens? We have, we have those people also amongst us, and they sometimes try to even make us feel what they are is what we are supposed to mm. be. Because from where they are coming from, a lot of them lose the capital of having been accepted as one of them over there. So when they come here, they try to be more, okay, they yeah. use the capital power in order to try and see if they can rule things. But then, you see, Ghana is such a very interesting place that it doesn't matter where you have come from, the system will find a way to let you know that we are here before you came. You know, it's very easy that people come here and they have the, the big dream, I'm going to, and, 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 and they realize that, oh, you've been calling the carpenter for three days, and he said he's coming, and he's still not yet here. And these kind of things can frustrate some of these people, because to them, Things have worked so well that you order a taxi and the taxi is there one minute before the time. Structure you know, is in place. It's in place. Mm -hmm. And so capitalism operates in a system like that when they know that everybody has to pay their bus ticket maybe in a week or in a month. You, know, you don't need to check usually. But here, hey, it's a different ball game. So capital, when I see capital, I think capital here, it's it has a lot of loopholes in it. And, and that's even what makes it very easy for those at the top to rule it, to manipulate it, and to use it. We were just talking before set open about how the covered situation and how they take care of things and how money is being escorted from the, your own people. Knowing that those people who are running us have gone through our borders, traveled outside, and they see how these things are working. 
they don't care when they come back they don't it doesn't move them and i think it's just there's something like we were saying the other time we should be able to be fixing this and what are we doing but if we have much power to do we will do but we don't if you do it's it's sad it can really break your heart and your capital your heart capital can be bankrupt <laughs> but on 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 the subject of fixing things isn't it a weird type of enigma where to be able to fix you need to already be in a position of fixing i'll explain so um to be able to fix the imbalance of how capital however we perceive it is distributed you already have to be in a position where it's balanced for you which is an unf unfair starting point I in other words the rich will get richer that type of you know so even though you have the intention to fix you might be wasting your time it's, it's, it's almost like your last point oh um, you might you just might uh, but <coughs> It's true, it's hard to achieve much without the necessary power. But then I think in our own very little, 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 little ways, we contribute to the imbalance. Um, I, I wouldn't lie. It, it would be very hard for me to be stopped by a policeman <clears throat> and know that I can get away with giving him like some 20 CDs when rather than have to go to court. Yeah. The transportation to get the, the cases adjourned, come back in two weeks and eventually pay a certain amount of a fine, it's much easier to get away with doing or it. Or end up in prison for, for just for jumping some a, small a red light. Or yeah. something, right? Um, <coughs> so I, I, I think a lot of the time that's how our mind works. We, we want the easy way out. And the easy way out could be valid. Maybe I have to be studying for some exam that would make or break my life. I really need not to be involved in that. Or I'm in a rush because some relative is in the hospital and they need me to take care of them or something. There's always a justification, always. It doesn't change the fact that we contribute to the imbalance, whether we have a good justification or not, in, the, in, in our own little ways. You know, and, and it happens everywhere. And if we would really be honest and look at ourselves in the mirror and think about all our actions in a day, we, we would realize that we, in, in very many ways we do contribute to the imbalance. So, so I, I see your point, though, that it's unfair for us to put the pressure on ourselves to change it when the situation in itself is already messed up, right? How do you make a change in such a mess and when, uh, when you don't have enough of a power to? It, it makes sense. But then you do have power over some things. That's true. Which, look, look at the... Remember when the pan pandemic first hit? And um, this was in the first year, I think, and there was going to be a lockdown. The, the way the market women jacked up the prices, yeah. the yeah. price of yeah. Gary, where that was their power, power at the time. You don't That's think of it, but yeah. they had the power. True. And they True. starved people. There were people who starved. Because not everybody can even afford a normal or long of Gary, honestly. And yet in those moments, when everyone was down, they had the power. And they used it. Or the price way. of nose masks when it first came. I know. It Crazy was extreme. Rice. Like the oxygen. Yeah. It was one like we're buying oxygen. <laughs> but um, so on the, on, 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 on the issue of um, unfair access to, to capital, um, there's always this thing where those who are at the bottom of the ladder, if we could call it that, complain about those at the top, right? Until they get to the top. And, and in that regard, the people who talk about, for example, black capitalism or black wealth, that um, I won't say all, but most, most, most people of black African origin um, know what it's like to navigate this world without the same access to, as, as most people who are Caucasian, for example. Um, yeah, so, so, so what's your take on, on the circle when it now involves those who are at the bottom of the ladder, but now at the top, and calling the shots and, and doing same, pretty much. The, the perception and understanding of our social structures allows that whilst people are down, they already start envisaging what they, they, are, do you some? they are, will be <laughs> when they also get there. Most of the time, I think 
not all of them even get to that place. But just the slightest opportunity they get, they start doing it. Mm. And so the process to which change should happen doesn't really happen because the intention to arrive before we arrive starts manifesting before we arrive. And this has become like a cultural thread amongst us. It's just the few who genuinely want to do the good, want to really do what's right, that try to do. But these are also people, simply because they are, their intentions are good, they are, bring, they are brought down before the time. For some reason, what I call natural selection hits some people and then automatically they, they are there. And they start to do something because their capital is so powerful and strong that you can't do. You, you didn't help me here, so there's nothing you can do. And these are some of the few people we see in society right now who are really like doing good. So, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is that the structures are so meshed up. They are good where bad is, bad where good is, mix, mix that kind of thing. The pyramid always get some pieces out of where they are supposed to be. And so it's just that fraction almost all the time. And because there is no centralized, which also comes back to the capital that opens us up to that bigger vision we all want to get to, there's nothing like that. We don't have it. That bigger capital that we all want to get to. Central notion of capital. Or the... the, the, the the idea of the Ghanaian, it becomes a capital. What is the Ghanaian? If I ask, can you give an ideal image of who a Ghanaian is? You probably start thinking in tribals. Yeah, okay, you, if, because you are coming from Ghana, you describe how this oh, is Madagana. You sort oh, of like, yeah. you see. And so our challenge, as you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. is very complex which is also going to make our solution very complex also. And so by the time we are arriving at wanting to say, oh, we can see it, another problem has already been generated by the way the solution is being solved. So, <laughs> yeah. so by the time we are, what, what you just said, the last line. By the time we, we think that the solution is coming, We've already realizing that another problem to the solution is already generated. And that's the kind of situation we have now. And so me right now, I think that we don't need a big dream. All we need is small goals. Well, Try to bad. achieve those small goals. At the end of a certain season, put all those goals you have achieved together and then call it a dream. Mm -hmm. But if we have that big dream... We all know that there are people who won't let that dream come simply because by the time it comes, they will want to say, oh, they want to take credit because they did it. Our governments are doing it. MPP is doing it. NDC is doing it. So who, nobody wants anybody to take the credit. And this is our problem. So by the time we say that the solution is coming, those who are already there who should be celebrating that solution is coming, they will start creating a new problem so that you don't get to the place and celebrate the solution. I like mean, new we variants. all know that there are I some. Didn't say anything. Oh, <laughs> I'm not saying it. We all know that there are housing projects that have been completed, sitting down. And because there is a new government, they don't want to go and commission it. There are schools, there are hospitals. There, I mean, there are all these things because it is another group of people who did it. We don't want to open it for the people to use. And the, the, the next government will come and do the exact same thing. And this they government is doing new things. They are yeah. doing new things. They, they might not finish. For, exactly. And then the next government will do the exact same thing to them. I have a question. Is, is, there, is there something we can call a natural inclination for humans and societies? Are we more inclined to, to be good or more inclined to survive? Which, which by extension could mean not good. Since you're looking for survival, do we, do we have that? Do we have like I, I think it's more about survival than being good. Honestly, I feel like um, if you don't have, if there are no repercussions, we might not all always want to be good. If 
the good will trump our survival. <laughs> we would rather go the survival route. Mm -hmm. it's, it's only having systems in place that will slap you if you do the wrong that keeps us in check. Um, it's, it, it, it's, it's a cruel, cruel world mm -hmm. and humans can be so depraved. It's, it's shocking. But I think it's, it's at the essence of it is a need for survival. So given half a chance and in a different setting where we haven't eaten for like a month um, and there's just two of you alongside me, there's no water, nothing, my natural inclination will be to chop up one of you so that the other two yes, can eat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Got you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um. No, but I I like the survival thing she mentioned that she submitted. When I think about the survival thing and being good, I have a feeling that naturally as beings, there is good in us. Naturally, there is good in us. Hopefully. But you see, when you change environment or you are in a certain space, the space influences your manifestation and so wherever we are at any point in time it is the space that sometimes influences how we behave yeah. at this moment in ghana tell me if i'm wrong we are surviving big time we are surviving there are people who have it they are also surviving simply because they can't use it the way they want to use it because how they got it was not through good. So they have to find a way to pretend they don't have, but they have, but using, then, then you don't see that they are using. And those who can boldly use simply because the way they had it, they don't care mm -hmm. who cares. Yeah. But generally, I believe we are all surviving. And so, when you, your environment change a little bit, and you know that, okay, I'm moving from surviving to living, then you can begin to celebrate this good, that, oh, I'm a good person. People can say you are good. But the intention to, before they got there was different. We, we are really like in a system where we need to lay understandings. We need to lay perceptions so people can see how, thing, how you arrive at a place. And people don't sell these blueprints. Mm. How people survive or how they go through something, they won't teach you. And mm -hmm. this and is also a capital that is not there. Yeah. yeah. It's a capital that we, we don't share. We let and others go through the exactly. same. Yeah. And they yeah. even don't even get through. And so this is, we have a, a lack of capital. Uh, how do I even put it? Compassionate capital. Is that it? Something like that, that we should be able to share the available capitals we have. Like she introduced you to somebody. Mm -hmm. It could have been someone who probably, oh, I still don't know, I don't, you won't do it. And that cap you lose that yeah. capital. Yeah. And so if we're able to share freely the capitals we yeah. have, oh, I think we will really yeah. not be surviving. We will start living. Yeah. But, but is, 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 is some of it's perception as well on our individual part? Because you're mentioning we're, we're surviving. And I know in, in Ghana, especially, um, there are people who will say, oh, you're doing well. Oh. You can't see it, but you're doing really well. You know, is it is it that sometimes are we wired to just say I'm surviving, even though we are not? Because I, I, I see that as well. This um, inclination, maybe even in, in, in solidarity, because you know everyone is surviving, then you are also tempted to say, yeah, times are bad, mm -hmm. when they're not necessarily bad, or you're not seeing the capital for what it is from where you are standing, but it's actually good, or could be good, you get. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> Well, no, please take it. The lines no, are too. See, no, but I thought it's really clean for you to wash it on. But I, I feel strongly that people can see the capitals that have manifested in you over a period. They can see. Like somebody, oh, I think things are good for you. Mm. It's the kind of capital their eyes or the perception they have seen you thrive in. So, so what's capital for them for might them not be your capital? It might okay. not be. 
whilst you have passed through that and you are looking for the next capital to come to you or to manifest that capital they are only seeing what you have already passed through and so it's easy for them to say that by the time you are looking for the next capital hoping that those who have that capital can lead you into achieving or getting to that capital space they are only celebrating what you have passed through and for you right now it becomes old mm -hmm. something old you don't need anymore it's something you have passed through so you don't even celebrate it or count it and i think that's also not too good on our side that we need to celebrate what we every have ha wedding. everything every we need to wedding. celebrate yeah. somebody's oh you are doing good though eh? but we are also too humble sometimes to accept it's, that it's culturally appropriate to say oh that really? kind of thing so i believe at some point we should just pause to celebrate some of the capitals we have passed through simply because those who can see that with you, you celebrate it with them. And if you can leave that capital sum for okay. them, mm -hmm. and some not most, most of them don't really care. They just mm -hmm. want to say it for mm -hmm. saying it because Ghanaians can be that nice. Yeah. And so it's like, the, but like you're saying, we get to that place and it's simply because we have moved on and we are looking at the next available capitals. But we have so many levels of capital that we, yeah. But I'm thinking it also depends on your aspirations, right? There are That's people who, yeah, who aspire, to, aspire low. to very low standards. Like, why, why should the government come and tell you I built a road and hey, it's their job? Because you've been in the portal so long that I know that you, yeah, yeah, you, have you appreciate yeah, the, that, the road, yeah. the tired road, which is going to have potholes in like two or three years. Yeah. Mm. But it's just we've set the bar really low mm. sometimes. And so, um, but there are also people who have very high aspirations. And so maybe they haven't gotten to the point where they can actually say, I've made it yet. So mm -hmm. maybe in your eyes, they are not suffering. But for them, they are still suffering because they still haven't gotten to that final point. But I think I agree with you about that. You should celebrate every win, right? And it makes it easier to continue the journey and to climb higher and higher. But is the fear for some who are hesitant to celebrate from the fact that... Um, uh, too much celebration or celebration at all um, can lead to mediocrity where you're sitting in the moment unnecessarily or too long and then you miss the call to move to to the next stop. Or it could propel you forward. I mean, I guess it depends on the context. There are some people who need to be pushed with that knowing, oh, I managed this one, then I can do the next one too. Yeah. I think it depends on the context. I feel also maybe the word celebration is what we mm -hmm. are using to make it feel as if some big, party yeah. or something. <laughs> I think it's more of appreciation mm -hmm. to the space you are in, the friends you have, the family who supports you in these things. You need to appreciate not just that you have arrived, but also what the they journey. have been to you. Like we hardly do that. Yeah. That oh, oh, I want to say thank you to you. Like I'm calling you. Just you can to say thank, thank you. you to me now. Thank you so much for everything you've Later. done for me. Thank you so. <laughs> and you know, these little things. I think it's also very important. I was thinking also of this. Uh, the. Yeah. Where did it go? To? Right. <laughs> anyway. But Almost what I'm saying, in, in, yes, in the appreciation is very important mm -hmm. that we continue to do that. Whilst we are doing that, I believe that those who haven't gotten to there yet, they also will want Inspire. that the way yeah. you did that, they could pick it up. Mm -hmm. Because as a people, I don't think we really, on our own individual basis, do that a lot sometimes. Mm -hmm. Because, mm -hmm. yes, I get it. Mm -hmm. This quote from the Bible, it says that, God has given us a desire to know the future, but he has not given us the full satisfaction of understanding what he does. Jeez. What to me that <laughs> what to me that says is that as you get to this new level or pass that capital, mm -hmm. it is not your business or your job to know what is going to happen next, but then you can see it. Mm -hmm. All you need to do is for you to really appreciate what it is right now. Mm -hmm. Continue and enjoy that moment until the next door opens for you. But you don't lose hope that you want to get there because it is God who has allowed us to see the future. But the you mean you believe in God. Exactly. Yeah. As, I mean, 
Okay, it is the universe who has allowed You had to put that in there. No I know, way. right? <laughs> no way. It's the universe who has allowed us to be able to see tomorrow. But how today will end? We don't have that. Mm. You, you understand? Yeah. We don't have that. And so, you don't want to wait for tomorrow to come and forget about celebrating, appreciating what already today is for you. And this, we lose track of it most of the time. And people can just lose it without knowing that it's because you are losing to appreciate what we are in right now. And that's how come that appreciation that you are losing is also expecting that until you appreciate me, the universe giving you this, we are not going to tomorrow. And for many years, I had, um, I had this issue where, and part of it is the ageism that we live with, where you're in a hurry to, to be a certain age, to have a certain capital. So I was always anticipating, you know, what I could do with an, um, this year or this decade, you know. And then, and then I realized that I missed the present, the moment, because I'm always, you know, trying to, looking forward. It's crazy. It takes a while to actually know that it's, it's, it's fantastic as it is. Mm -hmm. If, if, if the, the future step comes, then it's fine. But otherwise, you're doing really fine. In the moment, you know. Do you do you question? Okay, you finish. I was just going to say that we shouldn't lose sight of um, the fact that there are people who really are merely surviving. Mm. I mean, I, I think we are speaking from a certain lens of privilege, yeah, where we can appreciate. Mm. But there are people who are like hustling bad mm. and not seeing an end to it. It's it's not for lack of hard work. It, it it's probably social capital or you know, some finances that is not coming through or something. There are some people who are stuck in a certain rut that they've been in for ages. Yeah. And it's a cycle that they are going to pass on to their children and their children's children. And they are just stuck in this- Generational uh, misery like I'm, generational wealth. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Um, there are people who have to pay certain taxes. Like the black tax that certain other people don't have to pay. Like if you make it, you're going to have to make sure you're helping everyone else in your family. And that just keeps you down because there's the you're pressure spreading of being the thing. first in line. Yeah. I know, and so someone will look at them and think you have to appreciate, and they do have to appreciate. They do have to um, celebrate their wins, but then it doesn't change the fact that they are still stuck at a certain level, which they can never break out of because of the environment that they come from. You know. Question: If Black, you had a he question. He had a question. Can I? Um, sorry, <laughs> but on that. Um, there's this pressure on the first in line, on black tax in particular, the first in line to be quote unquote educated, first in line to to obtain a certain amount of capital within a family, community, other. There's a pressure to look back, okay, don't say back, but look to your community and, and fix what you can fix. Is it cruel? Is it selfish? Is it wrong to say, hey guys, I have the capital we all wanted, but I'm fine. I didn't tell you I was going to help you when I got my capital. Like, is, is, it, is, it, is it wrong? I'm <laughs> sorry. You said a lot of things about what it is, but you did not say it is cultural. I feel personally that it's also very, like it's in our social, mm -hmm. as Ghani, it's in our fabric, yeah, as socialized you should be thinking. able to exactly to look back home if you go out come back home and if you don't do that, they that you you are you are One lost or you you are really don't belong to us you are you have the name but you don't have the blood <laughs> that sort of thing you know yeah Actually, and the names pressure, will come up to you because so, people are so unreasonable you know i've been a student forever <laughs> as you know like woo, so many years and it's, it's just this perception that you are outside of the country. And so, yeah, you've made it, right? And people ask you for things that you what don't you even get me? for yourself. Yeah. Like somebody would send you a, a WhatsApp message asking you for the new iPhone that you don't have. I wouldn't buy that for myself, but I, I have to gift it to you. And if you don't, you are seen negatively. Like the pressure can be so immense. And as soon as people see you, hey, what did you bring me? I'm a student. I'm struggling. I wish you would send me money. Um, the, the hassle I'm going through to have some money to even spread you for one you know, lunch or something, you're not doing half of that. 
why don't you do it? And, you know, I, I'm studying, I'm a mother, I'm working at the same time. I'm not sleeping 24 hours just so that I can buy you lunch. But you are not doing it, half of that. So why don't you do it and help me out? I need you at this point because I'm the student, right? Sometimes I feel like the pressure is immense and it's unreasonable. And I, I get it that it's culture and it's, it's, it's important because without that kind of support, there are so many people who won't be able to make some kind of progress. True. However, in most cases, or in many cases, it's, it's unreasonable. We all need a rich offer. So. Yeah. I, I, I personally feel that some of our families see us when they see that you've gone through a certain stage. They now see you as the person, as the capital. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Instead of yeah. seeing, because capital shouldn't be something we should touch, it shouldn't be material, it's supposed to be that thing where we can only ask for and then enter into it or walk through it or that or use. But then they begin to see you. So everything about you becomes capital mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. And so they do not see the why. The know. Yes, they don't see why lunch should be difficult. They don't see why. Sometimes you'll be there and then you know that you don't even have Momo on your account. But somebody sends okay. you, oh, I need air time. Mm -hmm. That moment when the message came, looking around exactly. which capital can i source from yeah and that is a challenge very heavy challenge this capital thing is really is, is it capital. the way we present ourselves i mean not that we owe anyone to present ourselves differently but is it the way we present i remember i had a friend who went to school uni in new york and she came back home and got a high paying job and i assumed that all was well. And she said to me, it won't be well for the next five years because I'm paying, what's that thing called? The student loans. Student loans. Yeah. So um, it's like not even half, it's three quarters of what she's earning going back. And then I asked, but you've, you've left there, so if you run away, what happens? She's like, oh, unfortunately, somebody put their name on for me. Yeah. So they will go down if, if I don't pay it. I mean, I could technically, but that's not fair to them. They will have to, you know, but yeah, so I'm just wondering if it's how we, we paint the picture, you know, and, and now we do a great job with social media of painting a picture that isn't sometimes. It doesn't matter if I'm painting a glorious picture. That's my life. Like, yeah. why, should, why should I have to keep paying this tax that you did not invest in? It's different. You know, there are some family members who really invest in you. And, you know, those ones, they, it makes sense that you would support them if you can. You, I, I'm not going to borrow money to support people. Mm. You could do the borrowing yourself, right? So that's different. But so if you are able to, the Betty I know who came out <laughs> <laughs> on camera. <laughs> if you are able to, it's nice to um, support people. But there are people who have had absolutely no hand in your life, and even when they could, when they could see you hustling and struggling, they did not step in. But as soon as they think you are good, then they they appear. You know, and those ones are the ones with the most unreasonable requests. But then it doesn't matter if I'm looking glorious on social media. I guess it matters in, to, in a certain extent. But for the conversation we're having now about you becoming someone else's capital just because you, you present yourself a certain way, that's how I want to present. Why, why should that then make me your ATM? Because I'm presenting myself. You don't know what's, what's going <laughs> You don't know what's going on in my life. You don't know the bill. I might, I might have the money. I might have a, an amazing salary. But then there's so much else relying on that salary. And you are usually just the one person. I have like a thousand family members and many friends who are more family to me than the family members that I'm supporting. So your request might be the one I cannot. But then you'll be seen as a bad person because you look so glorious. But you know, this actually is what harms us as a society and make people corrupt. Like these MPs, the expectations we have of them. My goodness. Like they have to pay people school fees. They have to just dash money on the streets or else you're not a good mm -hmm. MP. And you know, all these expectations that people have. And yet we turn around and we blame them for being corrupt, which we should. We should blame them. But we, we help, we contribute we to it the with demon. these expectations yeah. that we place on people. There is the social goggles that people wear, that when they, wear, they see you with, I 
think this is also an issue. You said something similar to, to do with virtual reality that we already experience we already, in virtual yeah, reality yeah, yeah, yeah. by perception. Yeah. Exactly. So is this kind of understanding that is there in the society. And so it's very easy. Like you're saying with the MP. MP, let's wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ah, he's in parliament. <laughs> he drives a car. Mm. He changes his house. Like he gets fuel for free. He has security man. I mean, the, and these capitals, when they put it together, they cannot think or they cannot believe that you say you don't have. You understand? But on our level as individuals who do not have any government or whatever it is, yet that becomes like an insult at, at some point that why do you have to see that to me? We are all here hustling. And so it's important that you should be able to do something for yourself. Let's just meet and have fun about something that we both can consider common to us than we looking into that goggles. It's something people pick up to wear to yes. see you yeah. in another way. Yeah. And sometimes they call you exactly, they call you in another way or some way in order for you to feel good that, okay, we've recognized you like this and so you need to act like that. Don't look at me like that. Me? Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, we are out of time, guys. I, th I think, uh, if you would permit me, uh, both of you, I'd like to end, I'm paraphrasing you, I don't remember the exact quote, and I think it was in bits and pieces anyway, that we don't necessarily need big dreams. We need small goals mm -hmm. that we can amalgamate, if you will, mm -hmm. into a dream. That's nice. Episode 7 is out. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>